All right, beautiful people. Hope you're having a magnificent day. Uh, today's guest is uh, no stranger to the show. Admire him at the most high, and he is uh, doing an amazing thing. Commutes his time between Michigan and Kansas, where he is a professor. Uh, joined today, Dr. Randall Maurice Jokes. How are you doing today, sir? I am so well. Thank you. Looking good, man. You're looking real good, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. You don't look like you got a son named Jonathan and a daughter named Johanna. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. So <laughs> everybody know your son. Like Jonathan is like, he's everywhere, man. Oh, he is. He is indeed. And that's a testament to you and your beautiful wife. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Who is also from Muskegon Heights. I gotta put yep. that out. There. He, he, right. he is indeed. <laughs> I'm I'm a professor at the University of Kansas. And Jayhawks. Uh, what subject matter? I I teach um, really in the area of African and African American studies and American studies. Okay, all right. I'm taking. You must be tenured now because you you've been there a while. Oh, I I was tenured when I arrived on campus. Whoa! Well, you, when you got it, you 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 the man, brother. You just arrive on campus. You didn't have to. You didn't have to sit around and wait ten years and five well, years. You know, I had already done work, and that work, you know, they wanted me. Uh, they had to honor the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So how long have you been at at, at University of Kansas? Uh, this is why I started in two thousand eight. So time has uh, uh, flown. Uh, I started in January 2008, and I've been there uh, since. Now, of course, this is not your first book. You wrote uh, quite a few books. You got award-winning books. Yeah. Uh, African Americans in the Furniture City, The Struggle yeah. for Civil Rights, uh, Struggle in Grand Rapids, and yeah. Benjamin May, School and Schoolmaster of the Movement, a biography. Uh, you know, you, and so you you've been you've been out here for a while writing about yes. different subject matters. Can you talk about this book and uh, and why is it so important? Well, this book is different because the other books were kind of straight ahead histories. One is of a small black community in on the western side of Michigan, not Detroit. Uh, and what's, what's their what experience uh, look like there. Uh, Benjamin Mays was uh, the president of Morehouse College, um, mentored such people as Martin Luther King, Julian Bond, you, you know, a who's who's of black men who went on to do great, great things throughout the country. Uh, and then the book that I wrote before this one was about faith struggles. Uh, called uh, Faith and Struggle in the Lives of Four African-Americans, Ethel Waters, Mary Lou Williams, um, uh, Eldridge Cleaver, and Muhammad Ali. I wanted to wow. look at how they thought about and lived out, out their own kind of faith. And we often think about them as athletes and not as uh, or entertainers in the case of Ethel Waters and Mary Lou Williams. Uh, and uh, how Eldridge Cleaver, who was a Black Panther, uh, mm. thought about all of these things. And so I wanted to write a book around, around those subjects. But this book is different because um, it's a, a collection of what I call meditations or essays to help us think about uh, what we're experiencing today. But by using Dr. King's uh, words, by reflecting on the letters from a Birmingham, the, the letter from a Birmingham jail. So this is different. I'm really trying to speak to young people. Wow. Wow. That's uh, that's good. So your focus is on young folks for this particular book. And yeah. so what what age demographics are you targeting? Yeah, well, so let, let me tell you how the book started out. I was asked to go to Elmhurst College, now Elmhurst University, just outside of Chicago for Martin Luther King Day back in 2017. And it was I was to speak just after Trump was inaugurated president. President Trump was inaugurated. And I sensed that a lot of students were down or anxiety feel. 
And I wanted to um, go and try to take something uh, in my talk to them and provide them hope and provide them guidance and, and remind them that, first of all, we think of Martin Luther King Jr. as some static person, but he was 26 years old, a, a 26 year old clergy being swept up in the tides of history, 26. Um, and, and so I wanted them to uh, come away with some hope. And, and then after I, I gave the talk and students seemed to be receptive to it, you know, ding, ding in my head, I, I, I need to write these as a series of meditations uh, so that they, they get something out of it, uh, that they realize that struggle is a necessary part of life and that we have to always struggle to keep our place in a democracy and, we, and open up democracy to all people. Right, right. How do you compare the movements from the 60s and 50s to the movement uh, of today? Well, it's different, right? In the, 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 the 50s, you think of the 50s, I think going all the way back to the 1930s when people are uh, doing all the groundwork, doing all legal trials, doing all the kinds of work that needed to go on. And then in the 50s, it was the, the conditions were right for mass protests. Um, what my worry is that is that today is that mass protests can only go on so long and then people burn out. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to have those organizations strong like the NAACP the Urban League to carry on the fight when nobody's looking. And we need both kinds of organizations. So in the civil rights movement, you had young people's organizations, SNCC, um, the Student Law and Violent Coordinating Committee, like Black Lives Matter. They are grassroots organizers everywhere. But you also had uh, the NAACP who was still going to court. Who goes to the Congress and lobbies and keeps an eye out on bills that that are being trying to be snuck through. So I, th th that's the difference. The 60s had those organizations, like a uh, large council. And I do worry that today that we are, we, we pit those things against each other when they should be all allies, not always agreeing. I don't think that's the right. case. You know, there are differences, but that they should ally to for the greater good. Right. Are, is the NAACP, on, on your, in your opinion, doing what they should be doing? Or are they still? Well, they are. I mean, look, the NAACP is the oldest uh, civil rights organization in the country. I mean, you, you don't you don't exist over 100 years. You know, this being a business person, you don't exist 100 years as a business if you don't have something foundationally set up. So the NAACP is doing uh, things. They could do more. They used to be lots of youth councils all over the place. Uh, and there were much more organizers going out all over the place. And I hope they return to that tradition uh, down the road, because we need all of those things. Right, right. What, what do you think, one, Dr. One, King? And we haven't mentioned about Martin Luther King. He's a child of the, uh, Black Baptist preachers and, 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 uh, uh, and a Black Baptist church. Uh, so uh, those congregations, whether they're faith congregations, um, Islam, Christianity, or whatever, we we still need those too. What do you think Dr. King would say about uh, the Voting Rights Act, the Voting Rights Bill that hasn't been voted on in Congress? Well, I mean, of course, the the voting rights, uh, this suppression of the vote should be noted is not just about black people, right? Mm -hmm. It, the suppression of the vote is to keep people um, uh, away from the polls. So a tiny minority, um, what we call a plutocrat, might run the, the country. People forget that Jim Crow, as we knew it for, in terms of voting, suppressed not just black votes, but white voters too. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, um, it's a game right now, but it's it, it allows a, a small elite to run the country uh, in a country that is becoming much more um, ethnically uh, diverse from countries outside of Europe. Wow. How long did it take you to write uh, your book, Letters to Martin? 
Uh, well, this is, I started in 2017. Um, I had another book uh, that I just mentioned, the, the Faith and Struggle book. Uh, and and I kept just kind of you know, chunking, chunking, a, taking a chunk at a time and write, writing and rewriting and and really got after it uh, in uh, uh, when my other book came out in 2019. Okay. Now, uh, do you have any speaking engagements? Are you going on tour or anything? Oh, well, you know, both tours, kind of tours, both virtual and uh, a few public. Uh, so I'll be in Atlanta uh, at Kennesaw State University. Uh, I'll be at uh, in, in the city proper at Acapella Books. Uh, and I've got book virtual tours in, in D.C. at Busboys and Poets. Novel books and uh, a, a live uh, event in Memphis. Uh, novel books. Uh, uh, so I'm all over the place, uh, um, and I'm really grateful to the independent bookstores, uh, black-owned bookstores, other kinds of independent bookstores. Uh, but they've been very generous in giving me an opportunity to uh, share my work with them. Wow. Um, are you, how can we buy your book? Is it on Amazon or some other websites? Sure. It's on Amazon, um, uh, dot com, of course, uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, you, you can find, find the book or directly from the publisher, Chicago Review Press. Uh, but, um, you know, if you have a good local bookstore in your, your city, um, I, I recommend it. Last night I was, uh, uh, did a virtual uh, uh, piece with Shula Books uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Shula has uh, Grand Rapids and Lansing, and they have a store in Ann Arbor. And I did all three stores at once in a in a virtual uh, talk last night. I'm doing Detroit on um, tomorrow night, a virtual talk at Source Booksellers in Detroit, a black owned black women owned bookstore in in Detroit near Wayne State University. Uh, so I'm I'm excited about this. I'm getting to go, uh, if, if not per, in person, virtually uh, to to talk to people. And pe uh, you know, people are signing up, and that's that's exciting. Uh, oh. And I yeah, so I, I'm very happy about that. Are you on social media? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm Randall Maurice Jelks underscore books or uh, Dr Jelks two Instagram accounts. Um, I'm on Twitter, Dr. Jelks, um, um, and D R J E L K S on Twitter, uh, D R J E L K S uh, uh, Instagram. I'm on Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, author page, so people can catch me. And then I have a website, RandallMauriceJelks.com. Oh, I know you're a history buff, so how much do you know about? I'm a about professor of history. <laughs> <laughs> you agree on agree on <laughs> how much do you know about your family tree oh i know uh, quite a bit about my family tree paul um my family's from louisiana um uh, they hail from you know uh west feliciana pa i mean east feliciana paris uh uh point coupe uh parish uh they hail from um, um, Lafouche, Paris, and they were um, uh, part of my family. Uh, you've heard about, you know, uh, in in an early 19th century Georgetown sold slaves into Louisiana. That's part of my family's history. Part of oh, my wow. family's history traces itself back to Haiti, uh, being um, uh, when the French were escaping uh, Toussaint Leverture, uh, and uh, uh, French slave owners first went to Cuba, then to Louisiana and brought in people. Um, so uh, um, my, my family hails from Louisiana. I was born in New Orleans, lived there till I was 14. And so uh, I, I um, the other part of them were sold down the river from Virginia into Louisiana. So I, 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 I'm lucky. Um, I'm lucky to know all. Uh, lucky to know a lot about my family's history. That's amazing. So you, you, so you know, you have that Haitian connection. Of course, we all come from the motherland, but that's good right. to know all that. Right. Well, you know, I mean, but we had to make different stops, different places, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. right. 
Yeah, you know, and you know, of course, I don't know if you know this, Paul. I've I've lived in Ghana um, and taught at the University of Ghana on two occasions. Um, wow! No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I traveled to West Africa. Told COVID, I uh, I was last in Senegal giving a lecture uh, at at uh, Giap uh, University in in Senegal back in May of uh, twenty nineteen. So really, yeah. did you yeah. share all this on your on your social media? Yeah, you know, on Instagram and other stuff. Yeah, of course, I'm always uh, sharing sharing something about uh, uh, about that. So yeah. I don't know why I haven't seen. I see your son; he's good well, at well, it. He, you know, he's 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 different. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm an old school. I'm a boomer. I'm more conservative uh, about, about the whole thing. You know, I don't have no hip hop in me. <laughs> <laughs> you got it in you. you. You got the swag. You got the swag. <laughs> The old school swag, you know what I mean? So so that explains why maybe why your son started a club in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. He, he's still working at it, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to take, you know, both my kids uh, to Ghana. And uh, and so they've been there. And so uh, and we have friends and, and deep ties there in the country. That's good. Dr. Render Jokes, man, you're amazing. Always good to to to, to see you. Uh, can't wait to see you in person. The, to to get that energy from you, to learn from you. Uh, family, go online. Please buy his book. Please buy his book. Letters to Martin is on Amazon. It's on it's online. Follow him. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Facebook. You won't get no foolishness. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so appreciate being on, on on the show, and I, you know, always my grandparents always say thank you and please take you where power and money won't. And thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. You're welcome, Doc. Peace and blessing to you. Have a great day. Alrighty, peace. All right.